the Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to Luke glory to you chapter 1 verses 38 to 49 and Mary said behold I am the handmaid of the Lord may it be done to me according to your word then the angel departed from her during those days Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting the infant leaped in her womb and Elizabeth filled with the Holy Spirit cried out in a loud voice and said most blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb and how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me for at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears the infant in my womb leaped for joy blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled and Mary said my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has looked upon his handmaid's lowliness behold from now on will all ages call me blessed the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name the gospel of the Lord praise be the Lord Jesus Christ my dear sisters and brothers a businessman came here for a retreat the first day he came to me he introduced himself to me he said he was a thriving businessman he had everything a man could hope for a lot of friends political clout successful business and a wonderful wife a big mansion to live in he said father I have everything a man could hope for but then he said father I'm denied I'm denied the one blessing I always wanted a child a married 11 years God has not given me a child yet and then he became irritated he asked me father if God did not want to give me a child then why did God give me a wife I said a good question very good question why did God give me all these fortunes I said a wonderful question but whom to ask this question I told him this question is to be asked to the one who holds everything a God but then I told him when you enter the retreat enter with all humility the humility of mother Mary the humility of a servant of mother Mary and wait upon God for a revelation I told him riches have made you very self-righteous very proud very arrogant with this arrogance and pride you will not be able to hear the voice of God like a handmaid of God servant of God enter the retreat he entered the retreat I prayed for him I continued to pray for him at the end of the retreat he came back to me he looked much more serene and peaceful he said to me father now I praise God now I praise God 
God did not give me a child so far. I know why. I know why God did not give me a child so far. God did not give me a child so far because I was not ready to be a father. I did not know God. I did not pray. I did not talk about God to anyone. My house was not a house of prayer. My house was more a bar or a restaurant. Every other day a party to influence more friends, to get more political clout. I did not pray. If God had given me a child immediately after marriage, I would have taken that child for granted. Everybody gets a child after marriage. I also got a child. What's the big thing about it? But Father, now I know. Now I know. I would have never been able to bring up that child as God's own child. I would have never been able to teach that child to pray. Now I know. If God gives me a child, I will bring up that child as God's own child. Because now I know who God is. Now I know the meaning of life is not to make a lot of money and die and become part of the earth, decay in the mud. No, now I know the meaning of life. To be one with God. I know this. If God gives me a child, I will bring up that child as God's own child. I prayed for him. Two years after, this man came back with his wife and there was a baby in his arms. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, a God is a God of miracles. And God said it. My hands are not shortened that I cannot save you. My heart is not grown dull that I cannot answer your prayer. God has said it. And God said again, is anything possible to me? Nothing is impossible to God. And yet, why is it that we are able to feel the power, feel the power, feel the love of God in our hearts? Because we are not like Mother Mary. In Mother Mary, the impossible happened. The virgin conceived. And Mother Mary could give the Savior to the world. And why is it we are not able to experience the miraculous powers of God only because we do not become the servants and handmaids of God as Mother Mary became? Who's a servant of God? A servant of God is a person ready to hear the voice of God, willing always to do the will of God. A servant of God. We shall be waiting and praying the one thing Mother Mary taught the apostles in the upper room. We are told Mother Mary kept the apostles in the upper room of one heart and soul waiting for the Holy Spirit. The one thing Mother Mary taught them was to become servants of God. Servants of God. As Mother Mary became preparing them for the anointing of the Holy Spirit and therefore, when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and everybody misunderstood them, they said, this man, these Galileans are drunk early morning. Simon Perry said, oh, no, 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 we are not drunk. This is the Holy Spirit. And he quoted prophet Joel chapter 3. This is the fulfillment of the promise on the last day, on the last day, God will anoint his servants and handmaids with the Holy Spirit. Who will be anointed with the Holy Spirit? Who will be anointed with the Holy Spirit? The servants and handmaids. When we become servants of God, when we become handmaids of God, waiting to do God's will, that's when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Often, we don't want to be servants, do we? 
We want to be masters. I want my way. I want my way. You know, even in our prayer, I want my way. When I want something, I go to Mother Mary. If Mother Mary does not give it to me, I give to St. Anthony. If St. Anthony does not give to me, I give to go to the devil. I want my way. I want to be the master. I want God to do my will. No wonder there is so much of frustration in our lives. So much of frustration. I want God's way. I want to be the servant. What was the sin of the prodigal son? He grabbed everything from the father and he said, I don't need my father to tell me anything. I will dictate terms to me. I will mold my destiny. He grabbed all the money, went away to make his own destiny. Where did he end up? He ended up in the pigsty, right? In the dirt, in the filth of pigsty. That's where he ended up. And then light came to him. And what did he want to become? What did the prodigal son want to become then? A servant. He wanted to say, Father, he said, I will go to my father. I will tell him, Father, just allow me to be your servant. When he wanted to become a servant, what did he become? He went to, to the father. He ended up in the arms of the father as the son. When he wanted to be a servant, he became a son, beloved, beloved. So loved, the eldest son was jealous, right? So loved, he got a ring on his finger and that means the dignity of sonship was given back to him. He got a mantle over his body and that means the honor of the family was given back to him. He got sandals on his feet and that means the right of inheritance was restored to him. Everything lost in sin was given back at one moment. Today, we want to learn to become servants and handmaids. We want to wait and pray at a failure, at a misunderstanding, at a financial crisis. I don't shout at God. I don't scream at anyone. I become humble. I want to wait and pray. Oh God, here am I, your servant, what Mother Mary became. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The second name Jesus gave to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the power from above, Luke 24, 49, the power from above. As the power from above, what will the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit will empower us. We need to be empowered. You know, uh, speaking about marriage, what did Jesus say? You need to be empowered in order, empowered by the Holy Spirit in order to be married. The way God wants us to be married, Holy Spirit empowers us. When, I, when someone shouts at me, what, what do I do? I shout back. You know why? Because I'm not empowered by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when someone strikes you on the right cheek, what to do? Give it back to him. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Gandhiji, the father of our nation here, he said, soon everybody in the town will become toothless and blind. That's exactly what's happening today, right? Sort of revenge and violence. You know why? We are not men and women of the spirit. When someone strikes me on the right cheek, I tell him, wait, 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 wait. I pray, I pray for the power of love to flow into me. Stories told about St. Anthony. St. Anthony was working wonders, working wonders, and a very innocent man he was. Um, St. Anthony saw a pregnant woman with a big stomach, big tummy. St. Anthony became very, uh, uh, 
sympathetic poor woman with a big tummy St. Diane prayed that the tummy become small <laughs> it's a big problem big problem and the superior told him don't do this don't do miracles without my permission superior told him don't do miracles without my permission and Anthony obeyed servants and handmaids always obey Anthony obeyed and the church was being built and a carpenter from top was falling down from top and he said now wait wait let me go and ask permission from the superior to do a miracle and the carpenter stood in the air and then Anani went and told the superior um, superior this man carpenter is falling down I asked him to wait for your permission that he may not fall down superior said yes you are given the permission to do miracle and then Anani said slowly come down and then he slowly come down servant of God whenever there's a problem good or bad I, I, I succeed I rejoice but even in my joy of success I need to wait and pray to understand what that success means otherwise my success can lead me to arrogance arrogance and pride my failure my temptation at the moment of temptation I said, Anthony, I must say, Satan, wait. Let me go and ask permission. Ask my God, wait and pray until you are clothed with power from above. The two streams of powers, two streams of powers of the Holy Spirit. One, the fruits of the Holy Spirit. What are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Love, peace, joy, patience kindness goodness self-control faithfulness gentleness the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit these are powers where are they call fruits they call fruits because um, say a mango tree when you see mangoes on a tree you would know that tree is that tree is a mango tree the power of the tree is manifested in the fruits same way when these powers when these powers are seen in us we know the Holy Spirit is in us therefore love is a power love is not a sweet sentiment or oh, no love is a power a power that enables me to forgive to accept even when the other is unacceptable that's the highest norm of love forgiveness joy is a power joy is not a sweet sentiment when everything is going well no joy is a power a power that enables me to rejoice peace is a power peace is not a sense of well-being when everything goes well no everything is not going to go well anyway but even when things go wrong with me I can feel the tranquility in my heart the tranquility of the Holy Spirit the powers the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit then the gifts of the Holy Spirit first Corinthians chapter 12 first Corinthians chapter 12 the fruits of the Holy Spirit Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 23 the gifts of the Holy Spirit First Corinthians chapter 12, which are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? The gifts of the Holy Spirit? Prophecy, wisdom, understanding, the gift of preaching, the gift of healing, the gift of deliverance, the many gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are powers of the Holy Spirit. Say for example, you go and visit a sick person what do you do when you go and visit a sick person you know a, a room of a sick person is a very heavy place you are helpless you don't know what to do when we don't know what to do what do we do we crack jokes we crack jokes we try to laugh 
because it's heavy. You don't know what to say. And therefore, when you visit a sick person, when you go to visit a sick person, you prepare ready-made jokes. And you, you sit there and crack jokes. You know what? That sick person, if he's able to raise his leg up, he will kick you out of the room. Poor man is lying there, helpless, and you're sitting there cracking jokes. The one thing you must be doing, we must be doing, and Jesus said it, lay your hands on the sick and pray. God heals. I'm not healing. I'm not a healer. I'm a prophet of my God, a servant of my God. I obey. God has asked me to lay my hand on the sick and pray. I pray in the name and power and authority of Jesus. And God heals. We must be praying for the sick. The third name of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. As the comforter, what will the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit will comfort us, will fill us with heavenly joy and peace. Mother Mary was very disturbed. But then when the Holy Spirit came upon her, she began to rejoice and praise God. We will be able to praise God and rejoice only when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. I was watching from here when we were praising. I, I saw some people tight-lipped. Good Catholics do not open the mouth in the church. They will open the mouth outside the church. Not in the church. Tight-lipped. When I, when I said, open your mouth and praise him. Now, tight, you know why? They're guarding something. Guarding. Guarding the secrets of sorrow. The secrets of heaviness in the heart. They're not able to let themselves go. In the presence of God, they're not able to be children. We need to learn this to rejoice, praising God. But Mary let herself go, praising God, praising God. And that's what prayer is. That's what prayer is. Uh, we imagine prayer is asking. Of course we ask because God listens to us. And yet the one prayer according to our faith it's the prayer of praising. The Holy Spirit comes upon us and we are able to rejoice, praising and thanking God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. You know, these uh, three names of the Holy Spirit, three functions the Holy Spirit does in our, in our lives. You know, my dear sisters and brothers, let's be able to be men and women of the Holy Spirit spreading the joy, the peace, and the love of the Lord to the ends of the earth.